Hi and welcome back. In the last video we deployed your web shop on Railway in less than 10 minutes and we were left with this result here. So a checkout form that has the standard payment and that's not what we want. I promised you that I would upload a video where I would help you set up Stripe payments so customers can check out items using a credit card or Google Pay. Additionally, I also mentioned that I would show you how to integrate SendGrid so automated emails would be sent out and I'm not going to do that in this video just yet uh, so this will focus only on adding the credit card payment to your webshop and in another video I'll go over the SendGrid email setup but this is pretty easy I wrote a blog post as usual over at funkytonk.com and here is yeah, this is what we want to achieve, the credit card form. And in this article, there is there will be screenshots and um, text that you can copy paste uh, if needed. But um, I'll, I'll go over everything with a video recording. So I'll just get started. First thing you're going to need is a Stripe account. And there's a link right here, you can click it. And that will take you to the registration form if you don't already have an account. I already have an account because I set it up previously. So once you have created an account, you should be taken to a page that looks something like this. And I or I'm already inside a user for one of my web shops. Uh, that's actually the one I did um, for demo purposes for the previous video. But you need to create a, a new account once you're logged in as a user. So I'll do that, but I'll have to blur most of the screen because most of this setup will be um, personal details and there's no reason for me to share that. So you, you'll create a name for your account and I'll just put demo at function.com and Netherlands is fine. Uh, in order to to do anything, you need to complete your profile. So I'll click here. And oh, this is all in Dutch. Let me just translate to English. Yeah, so it says business location. I'll just say Netherlands and I'm a person. I'm not a business in this context, but you could choose a business. I'll fill out this page and uh, I'll edit it out. So you won't see that, but you need to fill out this page and click continue. Okay, so I just filled in the personal details and now we need to fill in some business details. If you have a VAT number, it would be a good idea to add it. I will not add one for the sake of this tutorial. Choose an industry, uh, clothing and accessories is mine. And these two fields here are important. So the business website, when you paste in your URL, Stripe is going to perform some checks. They are going to check that the website, they ping your website and see that it actually resists. And I believe they also run a little bit of analysis to check that it has uh, HTTP, SSL encryption, and is a safe site. So you will head over to your railway dashboard here, choose your product, uh, project, mine is Sweet Passion, and you need your storefront URL. So I'll click on the storefront, go to deployments and okay, my app is sleeping. Otherwise it would be green and I will have the URL here, but I can go to settings instead, scroll down and public networking. This is the public URL. So I will copy the public URL, go back to the Stripe form and I'll paste it and I'll paste it in here. And you can see it's running a little check. We need to provide also product description and this is also important. They might actually reject your, your user profile if you fail to describe your products or if you describe products that are in violation with the terms of services. So I'm not sure exactly what that is, but uh, I'm going to sell t-shirts. So I'll say t-shirts chip to cost the must directly from warehouse within five days click next and here's a little bit of setup of how the the bank transaction will look like i think this doesn't look very nice so i'm going to say demo 
funky tongue and the business genre will be this and you'll see a preview of the receipts that they'll get from stripe if you use stripe receipts uh will i add a phone number here do i need to uh i think i need to yeah page didn't load this happened also last time i did it so i'll just click refresh we're back here i'll click continue again and usually it works the second time it did um yeah, no reason for you to see me fill out this form, but uh, I'll, I'll fill in my banking details and then I'll edit it out. And you need to add some sort of authenticator or Windows Hello or security key. Uh, I already added it, but if you didn't, you have to add that. Click continue. I don't know exactly what these tax calculations are and do, so I'll just skip it for now. Here's a summary. Everything looks fine. Agree and submit. Okay, so now we are in our uh, newly added account that points to our actually hosted web shop. We need to get a few things from here. So we'll go over to the developer section and I will go over to the API keys. We're going to need both the publishable key and the API secret. Uh, and I'll keep this tab open and then I'll open also this one webhooks. And we need to add an endpoint. And I'll click here. And in this field, we're going to need our backend URL. So that would be the backend. And this URL, copy link address, paste it in. And then we need to add a little bit uh, payment stripe, I believe it is. Okay, now we need some events and we need quite a few. So I'll head back to the tutorial because I don't remember them by heart. I'll scroll down to where I list them. Here they are. Let me just do this here. So we need Let's see if we got them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. I'll add the events. They're also listed here. And payment stripe. Let me just double check that that was what it was called. Payments stripe. Always copy paste to prevent errors at endpoint. Yeah, this looks about right. We have now our endpoint. And yeah, so now we have everything set up in the Stripe dashboard. Now we need to set up a few things in our Venture backend dashboard. Uh, so I'll open up the, the backend URL here and add the slash admin. And I'm already logged in. You need to navigate to settings and payment methods. And here you see the standard one. That's the, the one that we have right now here, pay with standard. So we're going to create a new one. I'm going to call it Stripe. I am not going to put a description. Then we need to add a payment handler, select and so here you'll see Stripe payments and then this dummy payment provider. And the reason why Stripe payments is here is because when I created the single click deploy template, I already installed the Stripe payment plugin and set it up. Uh, so if you don't see this, 
it's probably because you are watching the video and you're trying to you just searched for how to add stripe to avenger app and you didn't you, you didn't come from my previous tutorial so let me just show you what i did to get stripe here in case you come from something else and if you see that you can just skip ahead a little bit in the video but i'll go to my git repository and uh, here it is it's the venture boilerplate and you can feel free to head over to this URL and take a look at what I did. But in the backend, I added to the package JSON. I added Stripe. So I added this thing here and it's installed a plugin. And in the Venture config, I added this bit here. So you need to do that if you don't have that. Or you could start over and use my deploy template and create a web shop that way. But if you're already far deep into your own project and you just want to add Stripe, this is how you do it. You add this bit and you add the, the NPM module to the dependencies like this. All right. But we have it here, so I'll just click it. And now we can put in the API key and the webhook secrets. So the signing secret is here and I'm going to delete this whole project after the video. So I don't care that you see this webhook secret. And I believe this tab had the API secret. So reveal and here is the secret API key. I'll add. So that should be it a name. API key, webhook secret, create, and it should be created. Let's go to payment methods and see. Yeah, so now we have Stripe and we have the standard payment. I'm going to delete the standard payment because we don't want it. So now we just have Stripe. And I believe we're done with the webhook secrets. So I'll close this tab, but we're going to need the publishable key here. So I'll copy that to clipboard. Then we go back to railway and then we find our storefront container here, go to variables and we need to add this key here. So I'll click new variable and I'll paste in the key that I have on clipboard here. And the, the value, the key name is something, let's see, I have it here somewhere. Here it is, Stripe Publishable Key. I'll copy that, go back to Railway and paste it in here. This looks right. I'll edit and you'll see now it found a change and we need to deploy the change. So I'm clicking deploy and this will take about two minutes. So I'll fast forward the video and it will be ready. I set it two minutes and here we are two minutes later and it says it's deployed. So I will open my storefront and hopefully we should see the credit card form now. Go to my basket. I still have my poster. Go to the checkout page. I have some information. That's fine. Standard shipping. Proceed to checkout. And there it is. We are in business. I now have the credit card form. Uh, so if I was to type in a real credit card number and click pay with Stripe. Uh, it should actually make a real transaction. And let me just go back to the Stripe dashboard. So let's make a t test. Let's make a test with the test credit card. This will not work because we are not in test mode, but at least we should see that the request appears in the dashboard. So I'll click pay. And it will say something like your card was declined. It says that here. But if we go over to transactions, so there is now a, a transaction that is incomplete. So it's working. I'm not going to be making a, a real 
purchase with a real credit card because uh, Stripe takes a fee for that and um, yeah, I don't I don't want to process money that way around. But I trust that this is working now and um, I hope this helped you to set up credit card payments. In a future video, I as promised will show you the SendGrid integration so you will be getting automated emails sent to customers once they place an order. Until then, you can uh, now collect payments and within the, the order section here, you can find the customer and you can send them a confirmation email manually by using the email that they provided to finalize your order. But soon in the future, we will set up the automated email so you don't have to worry about all that. Okay, that's all for now. I hope that this helped you. Have a nice day.